everybody in today's video i'm going to show you how to use power query in power bi so what is power query imagine having a data cleaning and transformation tool that allows you access to different data sources it also helps to remove the inconsistencies and errors in your data set such as treating missing value working with data types and combining data etc the most beautiful part of it is that all of these processes are fully automated that means if you bring in the same data source into power query in the future with just one click all the cleaning processes will be automatically applied to that new data set so that will save you time from repetitive and boring tax. In this video, we have a social media data. We would use Power Query Editor to clean and transform. But the first thing we have to do is to jump right into our PC and have a look at this data. So these are the data sets we will be working with. We have the content data set, reactions data set, reaction types data set. Remember, I said this is a social media data set, and the objective is basically to find the top five content category. So what I'll do, I'll just open up this data set in Microsoft Excel. Let's explore it together. So this is the reactions data set. It just has content ID, user ID, the reaction time, of course, and the date and time the reaction was made on the particular content. So I also have the content data set here, it just has the content ID, user ID, the type, category, and the URL. So these are the data sets we will import into Power Query Editor. So I'll just go ahead and launch my Power BI desktop. So in Power BI desktop, in order to access the Power Query Editor, I'll come over to the transform data and select this, then I'll click transform data. Once I click transform data, the Power Query editor has opened up. So here we have the ribbon, we have the different tabs, transform, add column, view, and the rest of it. We have the query span. This is where the different tables or the data set we will import will display. This whole editor is showing blank because there is no data set right here. So I'm going to select new source and then scroll down to select text slash CSV. Then I'm going to first of all import the content data set. I'll click and click to open then I'm going to select OK so here we have the content data set I'll click on new source again scroll down to select text slash CSV and then select the reactions data set and click to open it I'll just wait for it to connect and then I'll click OK so the third and last data set will bring in I'll select the same file type and then select reaction types data set I'll click to open it and then also bring it into power query editor so i'll select ok after importing this data set i'll come over to the first query here and select the content so this is going to display the data in the contents table so right here i'll come over to the view tab so for this view tab i want to select the column quality i like turning on that feature because it allows me to see the valid data that i have in a particular column and at a glance you can equally see the columns that have errors or empty values then the next thing i want to select is column distribution so this column distribution is basically going to show the distinct and unique values that are available in a particular column so when we talk about distinct values we're talking about the total number of values in a cell while the unique values is number of values that appear once then for the column profile if i select the column profile column profile is going to show me the column statistics so under the column statistics i can see if there is error if there's an empty value i can see the distinct and of course the unique values as well i can equally see the minimum value the maximum value average and standard deviation so that is basically what column profile shows it shows you the column statistics so i can turn it off for now if i need to View the column statistics of any column i can equally come back and turn it on so i'll go back to the home tab and right on the home tab here for this particular table we need to start cleaning and transforming this data so the first cleaning step i'm going to take i can see that the first column does not have a name so this name is just content number this is just like an index number numbering the number of content available in this particular data so i'm going to rename that then I'll also look at the names of the other columns. So for the type here, I'm going to double click and then type content. So I'll name it content type. So that is it for that. I'll also check to make sure that the data types are all correct. So for content number, this is a whole number and the rest are text data type. So it is actually correct. So I'll now scroll 
to my URL column. So at a glance, you can see that I have empty values in this URL column, but I'm not going to remove blanks in this URL column. We are going to remove this entire column. One of the key things to note when you are cleaning or transforming data is the objective of that data analysis process. So this data analysis, we're trying to look for the top five content category and looking at the question, the URL column is not relevant to the analysis. So we can remove this particular column. So I'll just right click on this column and select to remove it. That's one of the ways you can also come to manage columns and click to remove the columns. So I'll select here and remove this column. So we've removed the URL column right now. So the next thing I'm going to check is the content type. So we see that for the content type column, we have four distinct content types. So I'm going to select. So this distinct content type, it means that we should have at least four. We have audio, GIA, photo, and video. It should not be more than that. And there should, no, there should be no duplicates on this particular content type. So I'll select OK. Then for the category, I'll also check. So I'll click this drop down. So under this category, you can see we have some categories that have quotation marks on it. So we need to fix this particular column. The first thing I need to do in order to fix this column, I'll come over to the transform group and then select replace values. So in this dialog box, the value to find will be the quotation mark because that's the value I want to replace. So I want to replace it with a space. I'll just replace it with a space. That's just the first step. So I'll click OK. Once I replace that value with a space, I'll come back to check the category. Coming back to check the category, you can still see that we have some inconsistencies in this column. The quotation marks have been removed, but we still have duplicates of these categories. Like you can see, we have animals category here. Down here, we still have animals category and another animals category. This is because Power Query Editor is case sensitive. So it treats lower case characters and upper case characters differently. So the next thing I'm going to do first is to still select the category column, then come over to the transform tab, then scroll down to where I have this format click down on that drop down and select trim. So trimming is going to remove leading and trailing white spaces. And also remember that I replaced the quotation marks with spaces. So I need to remove those spaces. So I click trim. Once I click trim, I can come back and check the category. So we are getting close to cleaning this data properly. But right now you can see that we still have duplicates of this category. We have animals and we have animals. We have duplicates of them. So the last step I need to take is to come back to format. I'll select this and then select lowercase. So I just want all of them to be lowercase. If I select that, I'll come back to check this particular categories. And you can see that all the inconsistencies have been resolved. We only have one animals category now, one culture category, education category, and the rest of it. So that column is now clean for us to use in our analysis. So I'll just select OK. And we are done with the content query. The next one I will open is the reaction type. So on this reaction type, I'll only rename this column. I'll rename this column to reaction type number. So I'll type reaction type number. Then I'll also check the type to be sure that they are all distinct, okay? So they don't have duplicates here. And I'll also check sentiment. So sentiment is, we should have either of negative, neutral, or positive sentiment. So it is very correct. And we do not have missing values in the score. So that is very okay and perfect. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'll click on the reactions data set so under the reactions data set we can see for the content data set we have a content number the reaction types we also have a a reaction type number for the reactions data set we do not have the number so we can generate an index number for this reaction in order to do that i can come to add column and once i come to add column i will come to index column and select this drop down so how do we want to create this index? We want to create from zero. So we want it to follow the same pattern of the content table and the reaction type table. So I'm going to select from zero. So once I select from zero, you can see that we have an index column. So this index column, I can quickly rename it. 
so let's call it content okay sorry reaction number so i'm going to rename it as reaction number then i can also reorder these columns by bringing it to this point so i've reordered this column that is our reaction number so i can also rename this type i'll double click and then type reaction so this is going to be reaction type then based on the objective of the analysis that we want to carry out we do not need the user id column we do not need this user id column so i'm going to right click on this user id column and then remove this column so after removing this column this is basically what we have so the next thing i'm going to do is to come to this reaction type and i can see that we have some empty rows here in this reaction type if i want to remove the empty rows i can come here and unselect the blank and select ok or i can leave the blank selected and then select remove empty once i select remove empty this is going to remove the blank rows in this particular column for us so it's going to show you on the applied steps as filtered rows so the next column we're going to work on is the date time column so whenever you have a data set and you have date and time joined together in a column always make sure to split it for performance purposes so i'm going to select this date time column then i'll click on split column I'll, i want to split by delimiter so i'm going to select this so under this delimiter i'm going to enter the delimiter so in order to know the delimiter, I'll look at the column once again. And if you look at this column, you can see immediately after date, we have a space before the time. So I'll bring this dialog box here. Then I'm going to select the custom delimiter to be space. Then of course, for this quote character, I'm going to select none and then click OK. Once I click OK, you can see that we've been able to split this date and time. So I'll have to rename these columns now. So I'll double click and rename it. I'll give this a date column. Then I can also rename this and give it a time column. The next thing I will do is to perform a merge between this data set. So because we want to analyze this data, we have to merge it into a single unified data in order to merge these queries together what i'll do i'll use reactions table as my base table so in order to merge this since i reaction table is still open i'll come over to where i have the combined group and then select merge queries so you can merge queries as new if you merge queries as new it's going to create a new query entirely to perform that merge but i don't want to merge queries as new so i'm just going to select merge queries once I select merge queries, it's going to open this up. So we have reactions table as our base table. The next table I'm going to select is the content table. So which match, which columns match each other between these two tables is our content ID. So I'm going to select the content ID and then I am going to select OK. So once I select OK, we can see our content table is here. So in order to expand it, I'll click on this icon. Once I click on that icon, we do not want all the columns here because if you see, we already have content ID, so we cannot bring in content ID again. So I'm going to unselect all the columns and then select the columns I want to bring in. The columns I want to bring in is content type and category. Then I'm going to unselect use original column name as prefix. So once I select this, we have our content type from the content table. We have our content type and category from the content table. So the next merge we are going to perform is also with the reaction type. So still selecting on this reactions table, I'll come back to the merge queries and select this. Once I select this, I'll click on merge queries. Then under this, I am going to select reaction types. So for reaction type, I'm going to select reaction type column here and also select the type column in the reaction type then i'm going to select okay once i select okay we can see a table a column that has this table i'll click on this icon in order to expand this i'll unselect all the columns because we do not need all the columns in this table so what we need from this column is just the sentiment column and the score column so i'll click okay 
once i click ok you can see that we now have the sentiment column and the score column and i'll also check to make sure that the data type is still the same way it was so we are done with transforming this reaction type table this is now our single unified table we do not need the content query and the reaction types query in the power bi editor so we are going to disable it from loading into the desktop so if i right click here i'm going to select this enable load that is basically to disable it and i'm going to right click this and do the same thing once you disable any table because you don't want it to load into your power bi desktop you'll see it being italicized but don't we transforming this data now but what happens when you have new data in that your csv file when the data sets keep populating with new reactions to different content this is what i'm going to show you first so i'll click back on the view tab remember our column profile so i'm going to select the column profile so this column profile i'm going to select this um, reaction type so basically this reaction type is showing 1000 but we do not have 1000 rows of data here so you always come to this particular point always make sure you do that click on it and then select column profiling based on the entire data set so if i profile this column based on the entire data set it's going to show me the total number of rows i have in this data set which is 7210 let me turn off the column profile so let's go back to our Microsoft Excel and add new data to our CSV file. So we want to add new data to this CSV file. I'll scroll down and you can see that we have up to 15,000 rows of data. So for Power Query to automate this process for you, especially when you have new data like that, what you do is to come back to this source. Just click on it. Don't do anything. Just click on it. Once you click on it, it's going to show you the original data the way it was. Then right on that point, you now click to preview so we are going to click refresh preview for only this particular data set after clicking on refresh preview i'll now go back to the last transformation step and then click on it once i click on it it's going to refresh that particular preview and you can see that we have 14,414 distinct data i can just come over to the view tab then select the column profile so for this column profile, so this is the rows of data that we have. Remember, immediately the data came in. So Power Query has actually applied all these transformation steps down to this point. That is why you don't have exactly 15,000 rows of data. You now have 14,414. So once I unselect that column profile, I'll come to Home tab, then Close and Apply. We want to close and apply this data set to our power bi if you found this video insightful you can check out this video where i use power query to perform date calculations thank you so much for watching this video